Hello, welcome to building high value WordPress sites and another one of our live videos. So um, <clears throat> I was thinking a lot about what to talk about today and from what I can tell about things going on, the big issue on a lot of people's minds is what should my hourly rate be? Like how can I make more money by charging a higher hourly rate? Am I, is my hourly rate too low? How can I figure out what, uh, you know, how, how to put a price on a, on a project based on my hourly rate and all of that stuff. And uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about hourly rates, how you figure out what yours ought to be and why maybe an hourly rate is not the best way to, um, to, to price out your projects and your services. So here's the thing about hourly rates. And here's an, another thing too, by the way, um, if you're new to the group, go ahead, click the notifications button. And if you know anyone else who's interested in these types of things, if you know any other WordPress developers or freelancers or, hey, Rick, good to see you again today. If you know anybody who does any of this stuff, go ahead and please share this group with them and, uh, and let's, all, um, let's all help each other. So if you, could, if you could do that, that would be awesome. So let's go ahead and talk about hourly rates. So what can, what can you do to figure out what your hourly rate should be? And should you even use hourly rates? And so uh, here's the thing about hourly rates. An hourly rate assumes that if you have to spend more hours, then the thing that you're doing is more valuable. That's the underlying assumption of hourly rates. Now, the reason that you know, everybody, including myself, have used hourly rates before is because that's like the bare metal thing that, fe that determines what it's really gonna like cost you, like how much time do you have to spend? And you know, oftentimes if you're, if you're working solo, like with yourself, then you, know, you, you only have so many hours in the day and so you can't just be doing stuff for free all the time. And so you say, well, my hourly rate is X dollars per hour. Or if you are like doing project management and you're trying to work with, uh, other developers or outsource things to people or whatever. Hey, Bree, good to see you today. Then um, <clears throat> people, will, people will say, well, th their hourly rate is like the, the people that I'm outsourcing to, they have an hourly rate. So the big deal is to figure out how long is it going to take to do the thing. Then you can figure out what it's going to cost you, either in terms of your time or the time of the people that you're outsourcing to. And that's how you figure out like your internal cost of doing the project. And so then you tend to mark that up so that you're making a profit and you, um, and then that's kind of the price that you put on, on your proposals and so forth. And so one of the things that will happen, and this is, this happens all of the time, like people call us up for like consulting projects or whatever. And like one of the most common and frequently asked questions right off the bat is what is your hourly rate? And so if you say something like my hourly rate is $125 per hour, that's going to blow people's hair back. And they're going to be like, whoa, that's too much. I can't pay $125 an hour. And of course, you haven't even said how many hours you're going to work yet. And so that's, that's the really frustrating thing. People just say, oh, well, the hourly rate, that's just too high. My last developer was only $75 an hour. How am I supposed to go to 75 to 125? And like, it just doesn't mean anything, guys. It doesn't mean anything. And, um, and like, what if you're really, really good at what you do? Like, I've been building WordPress sites for like 15, 16 years or not, I guess not WordPress sites for 16 years, but I've been definitely building them for over 10 and I can do stuff really, really fast compared to someone who's never done it before or has only been working on it for six months. So, you know, like what if I can build an entire website in five hours that might take somebody else five weeks? You know, can I, can I, can I charge a higher hourly rate for that? Of course you can. And that's the whole point. And so what I wanted to talk about today with regard to these hourly rates is when, when, WordPress developers get out there and start, you know, figuring out what, what the price is that they're going to put on a proposal. The problem is we tend to be like really, really stuck in tech mode, like the technology, like what, what am I going to do? What theme am I going to use? How many plugins do I have to buy? How do I configure all of that stuff? And so since that's like deep into your, into your mind, that tends to be the kind of stuff that you tell to your customer. And guess what? Your client doesn't care. Your client does not care about the technology. The client cares about the customers. And so that's what kind of we were talking about uh, on Tuesday. But uh, so here's the thing. So to, get, to kind of get the ball rolling and to try to like shift our mindset from charging hourly rates to charging, you know, a, a more respectable value, a more, a, a more reasonable way to quantify your work effort. 
let's, let me give you an example of something that's outside the realm of WordPress and outside the realm of building websites. So it's summertime here. I'm living in Virginia. It's kind of hot out today. What if the air conditioner went out, right? And so I'm up here on the, on the third floor of this building. And what if the air conditioner went out and it started getting really hot in the office? And so I call up the air conditioner guy and I say, can you come on over you know, and fix this air, air conditioner problem? It's getting hot. We need some help. And so he shows up and actually I call two, two different guys. So guy number one shows up and says, oh man, all right, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to rip out your old air conditioner and I'm going to build you a brand new air conditioner system. It's going to be fantastic. You know, I'm going to put all the best parts in it. And, you know, it's going to be the best air conditioner system custom built that you've ever seen. And I can get it done in about two months. You know, and I'm just going to be, I'm going to be, I'll be in here every day, eight hours a day, cranking it out. And, you know, two months from now, you're going to have this great air conditioner system. And you know what? It's only going to cost $5,000. And then I'm like, oh man, you know, $5,000, two months. Oh, okay. And then the, the other guy comes in and says, oh, I know exactly what the problem is. Um, you know, I've seen this sort of thing before. I can get this fixed this afternoon, but you know, it's going to cost $7,000 or whatever, you know, whatever the price is, is more than the other guy. And then I'm thinking to myself, oh, well, that's much better. I want the air conditioner fixed right now. He says he can fix it this afternoon. The other guy is going to build me a new system from scratch. It's going to take two months. And so, and, and so I'm willing to pay the higher price for the faster turnaround. And, and so the, the point that I'm trying to draw out with all of this is that the amount of time that you invest in doing the work does not necessarily equate to the amount of value that the client experiences because of all of that work. So for example, the guy that says that he's going to rebuild a whole brand new air conditioner system for me and it's going to cost five grand and take two months. Well, it's prob I'll probably would end up with a really, really, really nice system at the end of those two months, but I don't care. I just want the cold air to come out. And, and, I, wanted to, and I don't want to sit here and sweat for two months while I'm waiting for him to finish the work. And instead, I would, I would rather just have the air conditioner system I already have and just have it work again, just like it was doing yesterday. And, um, and I would be willing to pay more money for someone to be able to fix it that afternoon. So how does that relate to what you're doing with WordPress? Well, what if someone, you know, what if you're putting together a proposal and like you have to put together all kinds of different plugins and you're picking a different theme or maybe you're even coding a theme up from scratch and it's going to take a long time. And so therefore you need to charge more money to cover the time. And what I'm trying to say today is that that might not be the best way to go about building out WordPress sites, especially with regard to, to, the, to charging things. Because like what happens if, you know, consultant number one says, I'll charge you know, $5,000 and I'll build you a, a, a great custom WordPress site from scratch, custom theme, custom everything, $5,000, two months. And another guy comes in and says, you know what? I'll build you a WordPress site that's actually going to generate leads. It's gonna, you know, you're going to be able to get customers from those leads. Those customers are going to be able to, we're going to be able to communicate with them on an ongoing basis. We're going to be able to learn what they want. We'll be able to figure out what aspect of your business they want because of the way that we interact with them through, through email or social media or whatever. And as we begin to do that, they'll begin to know more about you. You'll begin to know more about them. You'll be able to convert these customers into repeat customers. And you're actually going to be growing your business. And you know what? We can put a system up like that you know, probably in just about two, two or three weeks. So wouldn't that be better? You know, if, if you were the person that had the business that needed the website, wouldn't that be better than, you know, a custom, you know, website that took two months and cost five grand or whatever? Like I might pay $10,000 if you could be done in three weeks and it actually made a difference with the, with the, the way that the business went. And so, and that has nothing to do with hourly rates, right? So one of the things that we teach in the double stack program is we show you how to build a website pretty fast. And, it, and it, that does a lot of really cool stuff. So once you get familiar with the tools in the program and so forth, you don't have to go out and learn all the different themes or pick a theme for a website or whatever, and then go and spend all the time learning that or code one up from scratch for crying out loud. You don't have to do all of that stuff. And so we show you how to actually crank out an actual, like the, the core part of the website really quick. And the more you do it, the faster you can do it. And the faster you can do it, the better you can serve your clients because they want customers as fast as possible. 
And here's the thing, guys. It doesn't like the the webs the, the the actual technology, the theme that you use, the plugins that you use. If you use a page builder, none of that actually matters to anyone but but people like us, right? Like you know, the, your client, all they want to know is how can they grow their business with their website. So what we were talking about on Tuesday about like client hopping and stuff like that was if you're just cranking out websites, that doesn't actually help the customer. You had that whole analogy about from, you know, getting from, from New York to California and you wanted a train ticket. But as soon as someone said, hey, you know what, I've got plane tickets now. Well, then people stop thinking about the train tickets. And the reason for that is because people just want to be able to get to the outcome that they desire. And so the, the, the key to all of this is rather than saying I charge $85 an hour or rather than saying I charge $100 an hour or $50 an hour, instead of having it be an hourly rate, bring more to the table than your hourly rate. And so the, the way that you do that is you tell your clients something they don't already know. And so when I was preparing to talk to you guys today, one of the things that was crossing, crossing my mind for like a title for this talk was, tell me something I don't know. And, uh, and the reason that that came to mind was because when, when a client calls you up on the phone and you begin talking or meeting with them face to face, whatever, and, uh, and, you're, and you're analyzing the situation and, and you're asking, tell me, tell me what you do. Tell me what kind of website you have already, what, what, you, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Show me some websites that you like that you, would, that you wish your website was more like. You know, you know, what is it that you're actually really good at doing? You know, like, tell me why you founded your company. Like, as you begin to learn about your clients, then that, that gives you a foundation. And then almost all the time, you know, probably 90% of the time, your client is going to have some kind of a blueprint in their mind already as to what they want on their website. And so they're going to lay that out for you. They're going to say, here's, you know, here's kind of what I want to do. And I'm not talking, they might not have written the words out and maybe they haven't like mapped out a navigation or whatever, but they probably have in their mind, this is the kind of stuff that I want online. And, uh, and so then what, what, what you can do that changes everything is tell them something they don't already know. So if you're in the situation where your client says, build me a website that does X, Y, and Z, and then you say, all right, here comes X, Y, and Z, that's not helping as much as it would be if you said, okay, in addition to that, why don't we do, and then you bring your consulting to the table. So you have to have the skills, you have to have the tools in your toolbox to be able to analyze what people are doing and then bring more to the table because you need to be the internet expert, right? So if you want to build a, 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 a consulting business, you have to do the consulting. You can't just do the implementing. You have to actually help people have forward thinking with regard to how they want to connect with folks online. And, and, and they're coming to you, it's like when they lay out the map, the thing is, all of our clients, they do other things. They do their things. You know, if it's a, a psychologist, they are awesome at psychology. If they're dietitians, they're awesome at getting people to stay healthy or lose weight or whatever it is that they do. Or, you know, if they're lawyers, they're good at doing legal stuff. If they're doctors, they're good at helping people solve their illnesses. They don't do what, what we do. They don't do the web consulting, which is why they initiated the meeting in the first place. So if you're just sitting there listening to what they want and then, you know, saying yes to all the things that they say, that's not enough stuff. That's not enough stuff to actually raise your rates. The thing that raises your rates is when you say, hey, that's a great idea. And you know what we can do to, to, to really amplify that message is, and then you start filling in the blanks with the stuff that you know how to do that they haven't heard of yet. And that's where the value comes in. So when you start to talk to people about this stuff, and you have these conversations back and forth and, and you're over the phone or in, in these meetings with your clients, and you begin to lay out these other things, this is before you've even written the proposal. There's no proposal at this point. You're just meeting with the client, you're just finding out what they want. You're just establishing a relationship with people. And that's where, that's where it all is. Like at this point, I've been building, I've been writing contracts and building websites for 16 years. And you know what? The contracts don't really matter. That's a big thing. I mean, of course, you know, legally speaking and to make sure you get paid or whatever, you know, it's good to have contracts. And like we show you how to write contracts, but or proposals or whatever, you know, but that's not really what matters. Because if you are submitting proposals with prices on the proposals and you don't have this relationship established yet, 
that's where all the price wars come from because in their mind, they only know the things, like in, in the mind of your client, they only know the things that they know. And so when you lay out some stuff in a written proposal, you know, the first thing that all the clients always do is they thumb through to the bottom of the 20 pages or whatever and look at the price. You know, they don't have time to read the gigantic proposal from all the people that submit stuff. And so you have to actually have the relationship with the clients. And then when you start telling them stuff that, that you know, that they don't know, and, you, and they begin to see, hey, you know what? Working with this person, I'm going to get more than I've ever even thought of. They're coming up with stuff I've never even heard of before. I didn't even know we could do that kind of stuff. That's when they say, I like you, you know, and that's where the, that's where the value is. When they begin to think in their mind, I like you, and they stop thinking in their mind, I need this website, and they begin thinking, I need this person to help me with my business, then you don't have to worry about the hourly rates. Then you can, then you can just, you know, if, if you can crank out the website, the actual grunt work of putting the web pages online, that part doesn't really matter. That's the part you, that they could do for free on Wix or whatever on their own. What matters is what can you do that elevates what they're doing online above what they could otherwise do on their own through Wix. And so like, a, like a, an initial part of that is having your, your website as a WordPress developer, have the site that people land on, talk a little about, about who you are, where you come from, what you do, you know, how, you know, what, what your experience is. But what really matters is the rapport that you establish between you and the client while you're talking to them. Because like I was talk, telling you about just a couple, a couple of weeks ago, I was talk, talking to you guys about that, that, um, the doctor that I was working with that's moving to Florida to be a dermatologist and everything. When he called me up to begin with, he had in his mind, you know what, I want a thousand dollar website. I want to put, you know, my address and some information about my credentials on the web. And so if I had submitted a proposal for five grand or seven grand or whatever, he would have immediately just trashed it and picked up the thousand dollar website from somebody else. So, um, but as we began to talk and I began to say, hey, you know what, here's some things that you can do that will, you know, that will be better than what you had in mind for that thousand bucks. It began, he, he began to immediately understand it's not about the website. It's about, you know, I need to connect with this guy because he's going to really help me, you know, amplify my message, clarify my message, you know, get, get, you know, get the tools that I need in place so that I can actually connect with the people that I'm trying to help. And so the bottom line to all of that is, um, you know, hourly rates are one thing. Talking about the price of a project is another thing. But the real thing that actually matters is are you going to be able to help your clients get the clients that they need. And that's, and, and that's where it all comes down to, because if you're able to do that, and we talk about this all the time, the whole triple win thing, if you're able to do that, then your client is winning because they're growing their business, right? That's kind of the, like right on the surface, right off the bat, that's what's happening. But beyond that, their clients are winning because now with your help, the, the people that might not otherwise have known about your client, they now do know and they do like and they trust what's going on. And all of that is happening because you're in there cranking that engine. You're the one bringing all of that, all of those creative ideas to the table. You're the one actually, you know, leading your client with regard to the internet aspect of their business. And so those are the skills that you need to have. They don't have anything to do with hourly rates. It has everything to do with your leadership. And leadership is much more valuable than just pure implementation. Because if it was all about the implementation, they could just call up some sort of outsourced agency or even just do it themselves. So uh, I don't want you guys to be thinking that your value is tied to an hourly rate because hourly rates don't actually mean anything. They're not connected to the value that you're bringing to the table. They're not connected to the ideas that you're giving to your client that they might not otherwise have, have, have had because of the relationship that they have with you. And so if you can, try to avoid talking about hourly rates and instead talk about the concepts, the value, the, uh, you know, the, the, the ideas that you have to lead your clients. You have to be in this leadership position and tell them something they don't already know. That's it, guys. Tell them something they don't already know. Get your skills to the point where you know a lot more stuff than they know. You're the expert, and that is how you command high value rates. So that's all I had to say today about the hourly rates and, um, and how to command higher rates than those things. So um, let's see. Bree's got a question here. It says, 
Those are excellent points. My brother says to use business development language. Yeah, absolutely. You can use business development language, uh, but, but even better than using business development language is actually give people concepts to, on how to do the actual business development. So um, like it's not just changing the words that you say, it's actually bringing a, who, a whole new set of concepts to the table. So, um, so if, if these are things that you need to learn, then I would encourage you to try to learn, learn those things. You have to be able to learn more stuff than your client already knows. And it's not hard to do, it's not hard, but it is, it is a different kind of concept because the vast majority of WordPress developers, like if you're looking out at job boards or you're, you're in one of those situations where you submit proposals and like tons of other people are doing it too, or you know, any sort of like mass environment like that where there's lots of people competing for the same projects, everyone's doing it the same way. Everyone is talking about the website. They're not talking about the business. They're talking about the technology. They're not talking about the growth. They're, and they're doing it all with almost no relationship with the client they're trying to work with. So what I'm trying to encourage you guys to do is get the relationship, forget about the technology, at least up front, you know, the, the technology, it really needs to be a means to an end, not the end in and of itself. So, uh, and that's a really hard thing to say because I absolutely adore working with technology. It's, it, I mean, I've, I've got a degree in computer science. I've worked in bioterrorism for the, for the U.S. government doing all kinds of crazy data crunching and, and technology stuff. I absolutely love working in technology. But, uh, but when I also know that when you talk to people that aren't really in that field, they don't actually care about the names of plugins or the types of security or how, what kind of encryption you use or PCI compliance or whatever. People don't care about that. What they care about is what does it mean to them? And when you start talking about technology stuff, it's woo right over their heads. And oftentimes when that happens, they begin to think of, well, who else can I be talking to that's going to talk to me in a way that I can connect to? You got to be able to connect to your clients. So, and that's, that's, a, that's a really big deal. So, uh, so yeah, go ahead and, and if you're watching this video later on or, or even right now, go ahead and put some comments in, uh, in, 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 the, in the box below here and I will continue to reply. I'll keep an eye out on all this stuff. And so if you have any particular, any questions about hourly rates or how you do this stuff, let me know. And, um, and if there's anything else that you want to talk about later on, uh, like generally speaking, the way that I come up with these Facebook live, live ideas is I just take a survey of the stuff that people have been asking me since the last time we did one and whatever kind of comes up the most, you know, usually it's external from the group just, you know, through the, through, you know, the, the other work that I'm doing or whatever. Um, that's where the concepts come up and, uh, and that's what I bring here. But if you guys have something else that you'd like to, uh, to talk about or questions about things or whatever, put those in the comments below and I will definitely address that. If you have websites that you want me to review or, or even if you want to talk about this stuff, you can head over to doublestack.net slash call and, uh, and my schedule is available. I've tried to make as many open spots as I can and, um, and, and, when, and you go to that particular page, that will hook you into my actual personal calendar. So, uh, so if you go there and you want to talk about your business or talk about these skills or talk about how the things how you can bring things to the table that your clients don't know and that you can lead them online and the stuff that it takes to command these higher rates for yourself, call me up and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one call. It's usually about a 45 minute call and we take a deep dive into your business. We uncover what's working, what's not working. And then we take a look at where you want to be. Like what are the kind of clients you want to have? What are the kind of projects you want to have? And what is the gap between where you are now and where you want to be? And if there's some way that I can help you close that gap, we'll talk about that. And if, uh, and if of course, if, 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 it's, if it's not, I'm going to be totally open and honest with you about that too and do my best to point you in the direction where you can actually get the answers that you need. So if that sounds like something you want to do, head over to doublestack.net slash call. That'll hook you up to my calendar. And, um, and go ahead and, and you can do that right now if you want to. The, the spaces go pretty quick. And, um, but I do love helping uh, with this type of thing. I mean, that's why I do this group. That's why I do these videos. That's why I go to WordCamps. That's why I do WordPress meetup groups. That's why I do all this stuff. And, uh, and that's also why I hope that you share this group with your friends. So if you know other people that want to get into WordPress or that are struggling with, uh, with, the, with the business side of their WordPress or even the skill side, whatever it is that they need to do, uh, that's the kind of stuff that we talk about here. So go ahead and, um, and share this group with them so we can reach more people that would be awesome. So I look forward to talking to you if you decide to go over to doublestack.net slash call. 
and, uh, and schedule a call. That would be awesome. And um, I look forward to talking to you again next week. Go ahead and leave some comments if you have any other questions. Great talking to you guys again, and I look forward to seeing you soon.